another important topic thyroid thyroid also there is a drastic change in the questions being asked see here for suppose you able to see the screen yes sir yes sir yeah see earlier they used to ask simple questions from the thyroid in general surgery like okay but nowadays see this question a like 40 year old lady visits a surgery opd with complaints of swelling in the front of her neck the resident doctor asks the patient to raise the hands behind the head push the igneous clasped heads on occiput he finds a swelling lateral to the thyroid gland this examination maneuver and the possible clinical finding so even if we read the entire test book this will not be there because this will be there in clinical examination das clinical das it is there okay so questions are being picked up from even clinical examination we'll see what is that anybody can tell what is that what is the answer for this pc loss option, option b yeah very good so it is pc loss method no uh, pc loss method is nothing but ask the patient to raise the hands behind the head place it here and to push against the clasped hands on the occiput okay just put the hands here and push it back so that anything is visible here and here the swelling is lateral to the thyroid gland so it may be an aberrant thyroid gland aberrant gland or a lymph node metastasis anything may be there okay so coming to what is thyroid basically from anatomy we will discuss from anatomy what is thyroid thyroid is nothing but it is a shield okay it's it's like a shield shield in front of the neck so the arterial supply of thyroid and the venous drainage of thyroid so arterial supply is from the superior thyroid inferior thyroid thyroid ema artery thyroid ema superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery anatomy again what are the other branches of external carotid artery what are the eight branches i think eight branches of external carotid artery are there any idea yes no ophthalmic artery okay there is a code for that you know that code no sir okay sister sloey powdered face often attracted medical students that was the code which we used to learn in our first year anatomy uh, i forgot actually but it, it is eight arteries external carotid artery divides into eight branches it has eight branches superior thyroid artery is one branch okay so sister louis powder face often attracted medical students okay so this sc superior thyroid lingual facial ophthalmic mm, the others also i forgot i'll just recollect this for you and i'll tell you okay so for the time being superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery inferior thyroid branch is a branch of inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyro cervical trunk okay thyro cervical trunk thyroid ema is a direct branch of aorta and in the same way venous drainage also superior thyroid vein drains into the internal jugular vein middle thyroid also drains into the internal jugular vein and inferior thyroid drains into the brachiocephalic vein inferior thyroid drains into the brachiocephalic vein okay so questions can be asked like this see this regarding blood supply of thyroid false statement is so answer me false statement uh, first time being leave option a uh, read the other options middle thyroid vein is a branch of it drains into internal jugular vein correct wrong yes or no yes sir middle thyroid vein drains into internal jugular vein it's right thyroid ema is a direct branch of aorta yes or no yes sir yes middle thyroid vein is seen only in 30% of the cases it is also right only in 30% middle thyroid vein is seen otherwise most of the cases it is not seen okay and in the first statement is wrong first vessel to be ligated in during thyroidectomy is middle thyroid vein if it is there it is the first vessel middle thyroid vein it is not inferior thyroid vein it is the middle thyroid vein once it is there it is ligated first okay nerve supply 
external laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve anatomic lies sir over no sir we just no, had no, the no. basics class no sir basics means uh, which 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 or which part like head and neck abdomen no, no, sir it was just a basic session it was not taught in detail it was like a recap okay a but, superficial recap yeah but session will be there right session is there anatomic lies are there no uh, have to look into the time table sir no so we only have uh, biochem and yes, some medicine okay 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 then. but anyway just <clears throat> this branches and all are important only from normally just go through it you have this code sister louis powdered face often attracted medical students you can write each one of them okay posterior temporal <clears throat> and uh, auricular middle meningeal superficial temporal okay these are the branches <clears throat> okay nerve supply is external laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve both the nerves supply the thyroid gland and what is this berry's ligament anybody berry's ligament heard about it not heard forgot heard about it so but forgot yeah. berry's ligament is nothing but see suppose this is the thyroid gland this is the thyroid gland thyroid gland is enclosed by pretracheal fascia is enclosed by pretracheal fascia the posterior this is anterior this is posterior the posterior medial part the posterior medial part of the pretracheal fascia is condensed to form the berry's ligament okay in simple words just remember what is berry's ligament it is nothing but berry's ligament it is the posterior medial posterior medial condensation posterior medial condensation of pretracheal fascia pretracheal fascia if you see this we won't understand what is posterior what is medial condensation we, we will not understand anything but just look here this is the thyroid gland this is the enclosed pretracheal fascia it is just gland which is encircled completely the posterior part this is the anterior part this is the posterior part posterior and medially it is condensed to form the berry's ligament that's it clear is it clear yes sir okay so the main Fine, issue with this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve runs here the recurrent laryngeal nerve runs on both the sides so when we dissect here there is high chance that we injure the recurrent laryngeal nerve okay there is high chance that we injure the recurrent laryngeal nerve when we dissect at the berry's ligament okay because it is very closely attached and condensed okay and this triangle is done okay and uh, one more important point is in such anatomy wise i am telling you this is beer triangle i think in ent also this is uh, diagram is from ent only beer triangle okay uh, this triangle is bounded by three sides one is the common carotid one is the internal thyroid or inferior thyroid artery and the recurrent laryngeal nerve these three form a triangle okay artery vein and the nerve that is known as beer triangle beer triangle okay and uh, ligation of arteries superior thyroid artery it is ligated close to the gland if suppose this is the gland this is superior thyroid artery it is ligated close to the gland to prevent injury to the external laryngeal nerve because external laryngeal nerve is very close when it is away external laryngeal nerve is here when it comes near it goes away and attach like this so you should not ligate it away if you ligate it away what will happen if you ligate the superior thyroid artery away what will happen no damage yeah no injury there is chance of nerve injury so again i'm telling this is the thyroid gland this is the superior thyroid artery superior thyroid artery is coming like this into the thyroid gland this is the external laryngeal nerve external laryngeal nerve will be like this and it will near it, it, it goes away and it inserts like this so which is the best place to ligate the artery point a or point b point a 
point is obvious right so like if you ligate it here there is high chance that you injure this nerve so you have to ligate it near only superior thyroid artery is ligated close to the gland inferior thyroid artery coming to the inferior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery even closer this capsular branches will be there it even divides into the capsular branch these capsular branches you have to close because one of these branch will supply the small parathyroids small parathyroids will be supplied by it so if you ligate it here so the parathyroid blood supply will be gone it will get devascularized okay is this point clear yes sir, yes, sir. Very superior thyroid artery ligated close to the gland. Where is inferior thyroid artery ligated? Capsular branches are just very close to the gland. Why? To prevent the devascularization of thyroid. Okay. Earlier the concept was there that it, it, superior thyroid is near and inferior thyroid away. Earlier days it used to be like that. But nowadays the concept changed because we have to ligate it even close. I think uh, in your surgery classes in final year you were taught it. You were taught like it, like right, like superior thyroid. to be ligated close inferior thyroid to be ligated away isn't it yes no you are taught about this concept no. yes no no sir okay but you heard about this any time any examiner or somebody asking about this yes no no sir not specifically about okay. the ligation of arteries okay but before when we were studying in uh, this was a famous question for our internal viva voice also they used to ask it they when we used to answer it as superior thyroid is near like we used to remember superior if a person is superior we will be near to him if a person is inferior we will be away to him like that we used to remember so superior thyroid artery very near to the gland inferior thyroid away from the gland but the concept has changed recently that's why i'm telling you it's a recent advance here we will like it inferior thyroid artery very close to the gland to prevent why very close devascularization of parathyroid gland yeah to prevent devascularization of parathyroid okay i hope you understand this okay so so we can say parathyroid or thyroid is it because the pre the last time you said you said devascularization of thyroid that's why no no it's sorry it is devascularization of parathyroid see here all right Okay. The small things I I drew is parathyroid only. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So, so can you please show the previous image? This one. Yes, sir. So can you just say, I mean, condense it in one in one sentence about this image? This is the common carotid artery. Okay. Okay. This is the inferior thyroid vein. and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve we form a triangle okay this this all triangles are to identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve in to help in surgery we have to identify recurrent we cannot uh, what we cannot dissect or ligate the recurrent laryngeal nerve we have to safeguard it okay so these triangles and are landmarks okay landmarks on the body to prevent injuries unadvertent injuries to the recurrent laryngeal nerve okay, okay so thank you thank you for condensing it so clinical examination now anatomy is over arterial supply external carotid internal external what, what is the superior thyroid vein so artery inferior thyroid artery thyroid ema is a branch of aorta direct branches of others also please thyroid ema is a branch of aorta direct branches of aorta very important that point is very important even anatomy they will ask you thyroid ema artery they are direct branches of aorta all others are uh, different derivatives but this is a direct branch okay and middle thyroid vein is the first vein to be ligated in thyroidectomy but it is present only in how many number of cases 30% population 30% that is if you operate 100 cases you will identify the vein only in 30 cases and uh, ligation of veins i told you okay 